Oh, hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. I have the AIMA A07 Max here. We're testing it. Again, I've done a bunch of testing, and then I did a bunch of testing on the cables and all that kind of stuff. So now that we've got all this proved out, the resistors and all that stuff, I'm going to do a bunch of graphs. We're going to get a baseline on this amplifier. And then I've got other amplifiers like the A70 and just a whole bunch of them stacked up over here. We're going to start blasting through these amps and we're going to see how they stack up. All right. Let me know what you think. And meanwhile, let's, uh, oh, hey, give a like if you if you like okay that helps the channel a lot and i appreciate it and uh two big thumbs up to my patrons and my youtube members and uh danny uh team member appreciate it okay let's jump over here look at some measurements all right guys this is a quant asylum the qa403 so uh or here's our menu on the left and we can set up all kinds of tests we have a lot of these automated tests right here, and I've run a few of them. So let me show you what I've got. This be a lot faster than having you watch all the tests. All right, guys. So this first test, it's power versus uh, total harmonic distortion at one kilohertz. Okay. So at one kilohertz, instead of just doing the one watt test, we're going to go across about half a watt to 100 watts, and we're going to see how the THC changes through that so let's do that all right so this first graph what we have is thd on the left and decibels on the right and percentage okay so across the bottom is the output power so i started right around in here about half a watt maybe and went you know to one watt 10 watts and up to 100 watts okay and so you can see how the distortion is really low right through here and then it starts creeping up, went over 0.01 here, and it went up to 0.1 at about 20 watts. And then it kind of started to level off a little bit. So when it gets up to about 100 watts, you can see it's over here at about, here's 0.2, not quite 0.3, so 0.2 and a half maybe. So uh, still pretty low, especially for that loud, but you can kind of see how it changes over the output power. All right, and up here I said minus 18 dB to 6 dB. That was my input level, and 6 dB is uh, two volts input, okay? All right, guys, this next test, um, a lot of these tests, you know, are harmonics, right? And then harmonics plus the, all the random noise. Uh, so the harmonics being, you know, multiplications of the frequency, the fundamental frequency we put in and then you measure all those harmonics that get made and then also sometimes you're measuring the noise so sometimes it's thg sometimes thg plus n and then some of that harmonic stuff is actually you know because it's multiplications of the frequency the, the uh it's a little bit more natural it's not as displeasing as let's say when you have two frequencies that are apart from each other and what happens is they might add and subtract from each other, and then you get this inner modulation uh, distortion, okay? And so that's measured uh, two different ways. The SMPTE group, uh, Society of Motion Pictures and Television Engineers way back when, they came up with the test, and they said, well, let's test 60 hertz and 7 kilohertz. And what you'll see is that 7 kilohertz you get 7 kilohertz minus 60 hertz and 7 kilohertz plus 60 hertz and they'll look at those what they call side bands they'll look at those two things to see the amplitude of those compared to that 7 kilohertz okay so that's one of the tests in the 60 kilo or 60 hertz uh frequency is usually like four times higher than the high frequency one the 7 kilohertz one so it's like let's say 0 db at 60 hertz and minus 12 db at 7k so that's one test we're going to do that test there's another one um and let's see this one is the itu test it's called now but it used to be cie which was it was some communications engineering group so anyway that's another one and that one is done at that one's done at 19 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz. So again, you'll get the 
additions and subtractions. So, uh, but what they do generally, what they found is a 1920K, you subtract those, you get one pronounced frequency at one kilohertz. And then you get some other ones too, but that one at one kilohertz is usually the highest one. So as long as it's below a certain number, then they're like, ah, that's, that's fine. So anyway, th those two tests are ways that they can test this intermodulation distortion where you get two different frequencies adding and subtracting and harmonics from those and some kind of noise. So they're just two things that they've come up with, okay? So let's do that test. All right, guys, this is an interesting one. This is your IMD, intermodulation distortion, okay? And, and it's also the ITU. So that's in the red and the IMD is in the blue. So... You can see these are both very low. Here's minus 70 decibel. So it's really low. And this is 100 watts. And again, down here at 20 watts, it's pretty low. And then it just starts to ramp up. But, you know, this is minus 100. This is really low. And minus 70 is still darn low. Okay, guys, I just want to show you this graph here. Uh, this is 60 hertz. And it's a higher amplitude than 7 kilohertz. Just kind of want to show you what that looks like. Now, what will happen is once these signals are up there for a moment, uh, this stuff in between kind of starts to settle down. Uh, but I just stopped the measurement real quick because I wanted to show you what that looks like. And, guys, this is the ITU test. This is where the 1920 kilohertz is out here. And we get the 1 kilohertz. Where is it? It should be right here. But... Oops, it just changed on me. So it's running the test, but yeah, so that is that test. Just want to show you that one as well. Okay, let's do the Boley plot. Now, the Boley plot is just gain over frequencies, right? It's just to see where the roll off frequencies are. You know, does it start at uh, 20 hertz? You know, does it come up and does it drop off at 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, or what frequency? So we just like to see a flat band in between the gain should be really flat within i don't know 0 0.1 db is nice i think is what they like to target and then we see the roll offs okay so let's go ahead and do that and now here's the thing usually that's done again one watt so we're going to do at a half watt up to 100 watts and see what that looks like we want those gains to look the same at every amplitude right so let's do that Okay, so now we have gain and frequency. So this is your Bode plot. So this shows you the gain, and it's pretty darn flat right through here, right? And then right around 10K, it does rise up. And if I went out further, uh, it kind of looked like it dropped at 20K. But it has this peak right here, uh, you know, be just before 20K, all right? And this these little things when you see these in the plots they're just anomalies it's like some data point that was just you know taken somewhere and so it draws a line so yeah just ignore those things you can see they're all very flat right hey by the way guys these measurements i uh, because the software as it goes through and does these different gains i put different levels in there and so i tried changing the pot you know, the potentiometer, the gain on the input to see if there's a sweet spot to see, hey, if I turn over here, do I get, and then if I put in a signal, do I get, you know, better results? And really what I want to do is the maximum signal I want to put in is, uh, say, 2 volts, okay? Because that's kind of a common input voltage, you know, maximum voltage is 2 volts. You can go higher even, but 2 volts is kind of a common one. So I'm trying to go Okay, at two volts, we're gonna get uh, our max power out. And right now it's looking around 100 watts, okay? So uh, 100 watts per channel and eight ohms. Okay, that's what we're finding. Now, when I go to the really extreme end of this potentiometer, I do start to see more distortion. The noise floor comes up and everything like that. So I try to stay away from that part, okay? And I can get 100 watts out where I am at two volts, so that's kind of where I set it to. I put two volts and I cranked this knob and I found that spot, okay? 
All right, guys, this is one of my favorite tests. I think this one, some of the other ones, you can look at the graphs from some of these tests and come up with the graphs from the other tests. You know, it should, they're just taken in different ways, right? This one, we're going to go from the same thing, about a half watt to 100 watts. And so what we're going to look at is the harmonic distortion plus noise. So all the noise plus the harmonic distortion. And we're going to look at it across the frequency band. So this is pretty cool because each amplitude, you know, we'll, we'll see how much noise there is across the frequency band. So it, it puts kind of everything together in one graph, I think. I mean, as far as THD and noise goes, okay? All right, now this one is THD plus N, plus noise, all right? This is in decibels on the left. On the right, it's in percentage. So again, here's that point 0.1, okay? Now this time, uh, the levels, each one of these lines is an amplitude, okay? So minus 18 is that half uh, watt thing, and then closer to one watt here, and then all the way up to 100 watts. So... The red is 100 watts. The black one is the next lowest one. So you can see how as the power goes up, right in this frequency range, right around 1K to 2K, you see these top three are ramping up. So, yeah, the distortion looks like it starts to get high, you know, above 1% up in these higher frequencies, and then it drops right back down. So there's some kind of strange behavior that's going on here and the distortion we've seen that before but yeah so that looks like it's a real thing uh, over here it actually kind of notches down these low frequencies that's kind of interesting but you know right through here it's all you know pretty low it's just above 0.1 percent at, at all the different amplitudes and they stay and you know the real low amplitudes are pretty flat which but the interesting thing is they're kind of pushed up here a little bit so it must be a signal to noise ratio kind of thing. It must be more noise than harmonics, I think. All right, guys. Now, this is one of those uh, graphs, like I say, that you could probably take the information from other graphs and build this one. But this one specifically just shows you, at one kilohertz, shows you the gain, okay? And it shows you the gain across power. So uh, does it change? You know, we don't want it to change. We want it to be flat. So we're looking at that. And the other thing is uh, this one also looks at THD, but it kind of breaks it apart a little bit because it takes a to total harmonic distortion. All the harmonic distortions adds them up and shows you that. But then it shows you the worst one. Usually the third harmonics is the one that sticks up and shows off the, being the worst. So it shows you that one, but it also shows you the second because that's the next highest harmonic so it kind of shows you you know how like if the second third harmonic are close together and they add up to make the total harmonic distortion or is a third that much higher than all the other ones and if the second you know what we're going to see is the third is going to be pretty close to the total harmonic distortion so most of the distortion is coming from the third harmonic but then it shows you how far away the second one is, and then you know the other ones are even much further. So when you go down in the dB levels that we're looking at, it's insignificant, right? All right, guys. So in this one, uh, gain is in decibels on the left, and THG is on the right. So there's one curve, this blue one, that's gain. The rest of them all have to do distortion. So let's look at the gain. The gain actually starts up just above 23 decibels at the real low amplitude. And then right around closer to one watt, it's coming down to just above 22. So it drops, I mean, guys, this is one dB per grid. So it drops about one dB. So that's still, I'm just zoomed in. So it looks like something, but it's still fairly flat. This is low amplitude. So a little bit more boost at the really low amplitude, but then it, it's super flat across other input amplitudes. So, you know, all the way up to 60B, you know, all across here, looks like it's really flat. Okay, now for the THD part of it. Uh, this, on the right side of the screen, you see the 
axes and you know again the input levels across the bottom so over here at 6 db it's about 100 watts to the left it's about half watt and then one watts right here so it kind of well if you look at the top screen you'll see the total harmonic distortion is the one in red so below the thd the third harmonic would be the next biggest one and that's this guy right here it's very close to it there's just a little bit of separation the second harmonics way down here, uh, hovering around minus 100 dB. And then the fourth and all the other harmonics are going to be much lower. So all those added up uh, with the third harmonic would get us to this red line. And you can see it kind of ramps up. You know, the ramp is kind of faster here at the low. So right around 0 dB, it starts to level off. And then you can kind of see it getting flatter through here. To about 100 watts so that's what the THD looks like and it's in decibels here so we have to convert that to percentage but on some of the other graphs you saw where we had percentage so you can kind of match up the DB with the percentages but there you go that is what this set of curves showed us all right and just to kind of remind you if you if you've noticed on some of the graphs where you get percentage and THD in decibels so if you're looking at minus 80 dB, that's about 0.01% uh, distortion, okay? So 80 is at 0.01, and then uh, 60 is the 0.1. So every 20 dB, you go up 10 times, okay? So just kind of want to throw out that out there so when you're looking at the graphs, you know, it's a little bit easier to see them, okay? Because I think a lot of us relate to percentage and not decibels. All right, guys, shout out to Aima for sending me this amplifier for review. I've had a number of reviews on this now. I've done this testing before, but I went through in some other videos and showed uh, the interconnects and all the cabling and all the test setup that I did to ensure that I'm getting the best measurements I can. I hope I am. Uh, anyway, two big thumbs up to all my patrons and to my YouTube members. Really appreciate you guys. and. Big thumbs up, Danny, for being a team member. And uh, hey, for those guys that hit the thank you button down below. Um, gosh, I think there's been a couple. Well, one recently. Really appreciate that one. Thanks so much. Um, okay, I think that's about all I got. Uh, what do you guys think of this? Distortion's a little bit higher, the higher amplitudes and so on. But uh, what do you guys think? Numbers... It seems like there's something in the design. I'm guessing it might be the output LC, but there's something there that's kind of, you know, not giving the measurements that we kind of hope for, right? Let me know if you want me to open it up and look inside, do a little thing on that. I thought I'd keep that separate from this video just to try to keep the videos a little bit shorter. So let me know what you guys think of that as well. Uh, appreciate you watching and Give a like to the video. That really helps a lot. Share and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe if you haven't done so. That helps tremendously. I uh, appreciate you guys. And uh, by the way, there's affiliate links down below. That helps the channel. Helps support the channel. Appreciate that too. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.